Crossovers have been a thing since the early age of comics, from Superman vs. the Amazing Spider-Man to Crisis on Infinite Earths. You're not the Powerpuff Girls! Nowadays, the most popular form of crossover is the cinematic universe, the most popular one being from Marvel Studios, who have produced many superhero films with interconnected stories between them, like the Avengers films. None of this makes sense. Then there are the video game crossovers with Kingdom Hearts and Super Smash Bros, Final Fantasy meets Disney, and every Nintendo character fighting. Sorry. I guess we better all pull together and finish this battle for good. Anime is no stranger to crossovers. One of the strangest ones has to be the crossover between Yuritsu Yatsuro, Rama One Half, and Inuyasha called It's a Rumic World. It was used as an opening to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Weekly Shonen Sunday. It's fine for what it is, even though I'm not a fan due to the type of humor. A girl beating a guy up? Hilarious. Still better than the works of Ken Akumatsu. Yu-Gi-Oh! had a crossover movie to celebrate its 10th anniversary. The plot focuses on the three protagonists coming to Together through time travel in order to battle a villain who wants to destroy the trading card game to save the future. The plot actually ties into the story of the current series at the time, which was 5Ds, and how it went on. This is a must-see for anyone wanting to see the three protagonists work together, with the only criticism being that it is too short. Carnival Phantasm was a comedy series between type moon franchises such as Fate. The story centers on a pub which crosses dimensions and allows the different characters to meet each other. One episode can reduce the Holy Grail War to a game show and another have the characters racing for the grail. Imagine wacky races with fake characters. Comedy at its finest. Dragon Ball Z, One Piece and Toriko had a crossover episode for a tournament fight for food because of these guys. This one is good for the character interactions between the Z fighters, Straw Hats and Toriko's crew. Also, seeing these three with different powers and backstories battle is a treat for any shonen fan. Very good crossover between shonen giants. Lovely jubbly. Also, Fairy Tale X Rave Master. That was a thing for one OVA episode. Seeing as both were created by Hiro Mashima and it definitely feels like something he came up with. Overall it was okay, but a lot of his tropes like fan service and humor hold it back. Animation was good for a single OVA episode. And of course there was Cyborg 009 vs Devilman, which was released as a free episode OVA series, with amazing fight scenes and use of both sides clashing with their laws being explored. It's mostly based on the two meeting and battling but this works with a team of heroes taking a one big anti-hero. Also, yes, Devilman did meet Cutie Honey once as Akira, but never transformed. So am I dreaming this? I'll tell you later. Well, from where I'm hanging, it's a dream to me. <laughs> The most recurring crossover in anime has to be any time that Dr. Slump crosses over with Dragon Ball. It has happened both in the original series and Super, seeing as they were again both created by the same mangaka Akira Toriyama. Ariel usually appears to meet and fight Goku. She even defeats Vegeta, which is always funny. The point is, I think we need more crossovers and not like Excel World, where Kirito from Sword Art Online invented the virtual technology. That would be cool, except that both series suck. Yeah. Palonka. Some reasons we have to have more crossovers in anime is to have more unique character interactions across series. Have different characters like Ichigo and Deku team up to battle a common enemy, but it doesn't have to be characters within the same genre. There could be a crossover between Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and Nichijo, an action adventure meeting a surreal comedy. Truly bizarre. Animation studios could work together or one studio work on the crossover project that has had a history with both works. Darling in the Frank has shown studios working together with both their strengths from A1 Pictures and Trigger. A1 worked on the conversational scenes while Trigger worked on the action sequences. Even Conan and Lupin the Third had a crossover movie which was great, so anything can happen, even though we all know which is the best crossover in anime. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification button for more content from yours truly. Also, follow me on Twitter through the link in the description.